Fort Lauderdale, well known for its beautiful seaside location and winding canals. A vibrant artist community has blossomed and young professionals moved in. Its position appeals to cruisers sailing south to warm their skin and souls. Continue watching to learn how to navigate this city by the sea. I'm Kristen, this is Fabio, and this is our dog Yoda. We're looking for adventure and freedom in harbors unknown, but for now, we're starting in our own backyard. We sold our dream home of 16 years that we remodeled with love and attention to every detail and moved on to our catamaran Wanderlust, where a couple of dreamers with a longing to explore the world's natural wonders, food, and cultures. To live by the wind, current, and the sun, Click the subscribe button to come along for the ride. Fort Lauderdale, a U.S. city located on the southeast coast of Florida, 25 miles north of Miami. Known as the yachting capital of the world, Fort Lauderdale is a major manufacturing and maintenance center for yachts. With its many canals and proximity to the Bahamas and Caribbean, it is also a popular yachting vacation stop and home port for 42,000 boats and approximately 100 marinas and boatyards. This, combined with 300 plus sunshiny days a year and an average year-round temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, it's no wonder many cruisers sailing south opt to stop in this tropical city. Fort Lauderdale is also home to Port Everglades, the nation's third busiest cruise port. It is Florida's deepest port and is an integral petroleum receiving point. The inlet boasts a wide channel and is easily navigable. Cruisers making their way south should note there are few truly safe and large inlets along the southeast coast. After entering the inlet, you can either head south to Hollywood, which has a small yet affordable marina, or head north into Fort Lauderdale. Heading into Fort Lauderdale, you'll encounter the 17th Causeway Bridge with 55-foot clearance. It opens on the hour and half hour. There are a few options for marinas, moorings, and anchorages nearby. Just north of the 17th Causeway Bridge on the west side is Fort Lauderdale Marina, and on the east side is the Pier 66 Marina. The Fort Lauderdale Marina is probably more cost effective, but they don't have slips for catamarans. On the other side, Pier 66 has a number of slips for catamarans. Continuing north on the intercoastal, you can navigate to Lake Silva, a small protected anchorage in a residential neighborhood. Next up is Bahia Mar, which is more for mega yachts at $5 a foot a day the last time we checked. Just past Bahia Mar is the Las Olas Marina, which as of this published date is still reasonably priced. Across from the marina on the south side of Las Olas Bridge is a mooring ball field, and north of the bridge just past the marina is what has become quite a popular anchorage. Once settled, those coming from international waters will of course need to check in at customs. The Customs and Border Protection Office is about a 15-minute drive from the Las Olas Marina in an unexpected location. It's an industrial area close to the port and the airport. It seems that the CBP Rome app can be used to report U.S. entry to CBP once a small vessel has returned to land from international waters. Definitely check the requirements for yourself, especially if traveling during COVID restrictions. We'll list the app in the description below. West Marine, Boat Owners Warehouse, Sailor Man, and McDonald's Hardware are all located around the State Road 84 area Many cruisers stop in Fort Lauderdale because there are quite a few reputable repair shops including just catamarans. Next stop for us would be the harbor shops for groceries at Publix and wine at Total Wine, also on the way back to Las Olas Marina. We highly recommend you leave time for a little exploring in Fort Lauderdale. The beautiful beach is a great place to relax after a sail before you head out. I love that you can see the beach from the nice wide sidewalk, perfect for walking or running. There's also an exercise area and a basketball court. On weekend mornings, it's filled with people working out, 
playing basketball, and enjoying the beach. There are even e-bike rentals along the promenade. Its soft sands, warm waters, and three nearby reefs invites scuba divers to enjoy one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. The Southeast Florida Reef Tract extends from Miami northward to Palm Beach. Greater Fort Lauderdale accounts for 23 miles in the middle of the tract and the largest number of dive sites with over 100 reef and wreck sites. There are three distinct ridges of natural reefs called first, second, and third reefs. The reef tracks are very close to shore. The furthest is only one mile from shore where the Gulf Stream bathes the reefs with clean, clear water and attracts hundreds of species of fish. The water taxi ride is a great way to see the city and learn about its history, even considering you have your own boat. There are a variety of routes. One even goes as far south as Hollywood. You can pick it up right next to the Las Olas Marina and take it up the river to the shops and restaurants stop on Las Olas. It's the perfect place to walk to our favorite bakery, Gran Forno. They have the most delicious bread, sandwiches, pastries, and coffee. Many restaurants, shops, and galleries line Las Olas Boulevard, providing a pleasant afternoon experience. El Camino is known for its scrumptious Mexican food and drinks. A short drive away is FAT Village, an acronym for Flagler Arts and Technology, an arts district whose purpose is to promote the creation, exhibition, curation, research, and education of emerging contemporary artists. Every last Saturday of the month, pre-pandemic, the resident artists hosted a vibrant art walk open to the community, showcasing new art exhibits, local artists and artisans selling gifts and goods, and a variety of food and entertainment. I had the pleasure of participating in a couple of art walks. I organized what I suppose can be called live art, where an artist painted a model to blend in with the mural, illustrating that people are part of the fabric of the community. Just around the corner is Sistrunk Marketplace, a new food hall, brewery, and marketplace. The on-site Sistrunk Collective Boutique features a variety of products by local artists and entrepreneurs. Featured art installations, unique artist kiosks, talented musicians and DJs represent South Florida's upcoming talent. Cooking classes, distillery and tours, DJ Academy, and Kaufner Brewery provide awesome entertainment options. One of our favorite ways to end the day is dinner at Coconuts, a local favorite. Coconuts is part of the Be Nice restaurant group, owned by a South Florida family. If you're heading back from Las Olas, you can take the water taxi and get off at the south end of Bahia Mar. It's just a short walk from that stop. You can also ride over in your dinghy and tie up at the dock. Hold
We cannot resist their delicious burgers, though they offer a variety of options. opinion, it has the best sunset view of the intercoastal. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We had a great time exploring and sharing the city we've called home for 16 years. Please leave any questions or comments below. We love hearing from you. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Let us know if you come to Fort Lauderdale. It would be great to meet you. If I'm gonna love someone.